Joey Rogers, and welcome to Prophecy File. We're glad that you've joined us, and I'm so glad that you have joined us at our new time. Monday nights at 6.30 Central Time is the new time for Prophecy Files release, and I want you to make sure you share that out with everyone you can, and especially tonight's broadcast. I believe this will be so critical for your understanding. The time we're living in, of course, under the confines of stay-at-home orders and all kinds of things that are taking place that are all pointing toward the imminent return of Jesus Christ. Before I get into this teaching tonight from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, I want to share with you some of the uh, articles and headlines that are very revealing in the time of this power takeover and what is on the horizon as far as Bible prophecy is concerned. It starts tonight with a Harvard professor who has now called homeschooling dangerous. She says that it gives parents authoritarian rule over their kids. Now, please notice what she has to say. In this article, it reads, in the Harvard Magazine that's dated May and June, uh, this professor, this law professor, and the faculty director of the school's uh, child advocacy program, she is, uh, is worried about homeschooled children will not be able to contribute to a democratic society. She says that the issue is, do we think that parents should have 24-7 essential authoritarian control over their children from ages 0 to 18? He goes on to say, without citing specific examples, the civil rights and the family law teacher argued that homeschooling children are at higher risk of abuse. She says, quote, I think an overwhelming majority of legislators and American people, if they look at the situation, would conclude that something ought to be done. Can you imagine uh, a, an individual such as this that is citing that homeschooling is actually dangerous? Well, the Bible is very clear that it's parents that are to instruct their children from the very beginning. Certainly there are teachers and educators and those that we have trusted their education to, but ultimately that is up to the parents by God's order and design. How important that it is in this power grab that she is uh, wanting to do and take over from the parents what is absolute control. Well, I got news for you. Your children are given to you by God, and they belong to you, not the state, not the college, not the government. They belong to you as the parents and the ultimate authority on this earth of your children. From another article, swarms of killer hornets prophesied in the Bible are about to invade Washington state. The Bible is cited in this article in Joshua 24 and 12 that I will send hornets ahead of you and to drive them out before you. This is in the book of Joshua, just like the two Amorite kings, not by your sword or by your bow. God said, I'm going to send the plague of hornets ahead of Joshua, and they defeated the enemies of Israel. In this article, it describes these hornets that are now invading the United States that have been invading uh, multiple other areas. They call them Asian hornets. They're two inches long with a wingspan of three inches. And they call these giant Asian hornets uh, deadly to the degree that their stings, that could be multiple stings upon a human being, can actually uh, inflict death upon individuals that not only may be susceptible to it, but can create liver uh, problems, respiratory issues, extreme pain, and blood clots as a result of their stings. Now stay with me. The people that are allergic to these particular uh, stings is just like this described in this article as the venom of a snake. According to this article, it's not known how or where these hornets first arrived in North America, but a nest was discovered in 2019 in, on an island in Canada. Later that year, the Washington State Department of Agriculture confirmed a report of the deadly specimen of these hornets in the United States adjacent to the border of Vancouver. The first reports of these species in the United States were made there and that they were a total of four different sightings uh, that have been of these giant Asian hornets in Washington state last year, 2019. In addition to the threat the Asian hornets pose to humans, they also feed, and this is an issue, on honeybees and can actually devastate those hives, eating up uh, to 50 bees a day. These hornets will do that. Now, 
According to this article, this is sometimes translated hornets in the word of God as the plague or a plague, and it is a key element in the judgment coming to a nation and redemption according to the Bible and according to Hebrew scholars. According to the scripture, God says, as we read to you in Joshua 24, that God would send hornets ahead of Joshua's army to defeat the enemies of God. He said, I would send them ahead of you and they will drive out the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Hittites, according to Exodus 23, verse 27 through 28. It also states in this article that God will do to the people now uh, that do not fear Jehovah God and by sending judgment or the plague of hornets against them in Deuteronomy 7, verse 17 through 20, until those that are left in hiding will perish. The Bible states, according to the book of Joshua, that these hornets, again, would be sent out ahead of the children of Israel. According to Jewish tradition, in this article, the 10 plagues of Egypt that were happening during that particular time of the Exodus, these wonders would appear in the last days in mass. They appeared in, in the uh, recording of the Exodus of the children of Israel in the book of Exodus, and these hornets would reappear and the plagues prior to the coming of Messiah. According to the book of Micah, chapter 7, verse 15, he said, I will show him wondrous deeds as in the days when you are sent forth from the land of Egypt. That is, these plagues would reappear in the last day. Now, this is very important because in this particular article, uh, with the animal kingdom and these plagues of hornets and locusts that you've been seeing that are now ramping up their devastation in Africa, North Africa, and Egypt, and other uh, locations there in the Middle East. This article reads, as people stay home, earth turns wilder and cleaner. Listen to this. Smog has been stopped choking those in New Delhi, one of the most polluted cities in all of the world, and India's getting views now and sites that have not been visible in decades. This because plants industry has been shut down and the air is getting clear because of the pollution and the smog that's filling up uh, the air. In Rome, air pollution levels from mid-March to mid-April are down 49% from a year ago, and the stars seem to be more visible at night. According to this article, lions are now being spotted as wild animals are taking over major cities, roaming down the roads of locations where people have been confined to their home. Now, this is a Bible prophecy fact that he said in the last days that wild animals and beasts would begin to take over the cities. When you look back in the article concerning the hornets and the stinging of those uh, and human beings in the last days, the Bible records that there would be uh, scorpions, flying locusts and scorpions in the book of Revelation during the tribulation period that would have stingers in their tails that would afflict men for five months, the Bible says. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bible prophecy in motion right now. This article concerning wild beasts goes on to read that people are now noticing animals in places and at times that they don't usually. Coyotes have been meandering along downtown Chicago, Michigan Avenue and near San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. In fact, this little bit of video footage is quite chilling as you can hear the sounds of those coyotes in downtown Chicago and San Francisco. This article continues that uh, pumas have been roaming the streets of Santiago, Chile. Goats that are taking over the towns of Wales and in India. Already the wildlife is becoming more daring and more bold in the days that are ahead. Monkeys have been taking over areas, uh, literally going into houses and opening the refrigerators looking for food. And in one chilling Bible prophecy fact, you can see from this particular picture on April the 11th, 2020, that a pack of jackals that have been feeding on dog food left for them in downtown Tel Aviv, Israel, and human beings are fearing for their lives at nighttime as these jackals, hyenas, are taking over the cities. You also are seeing the picture of 
uh, vultures that are circling over the city of New York. Whenever they smell the gases of dead uh, bodies and uh, decaying flesh, you can find these vultures that are circling over different areas. Now in downtown New York, the pictures that you see are verifying this fact. When jackals begin to show up, the Bible says, this is a frequent reference in the Word of God, throughout the Word of God, of judgment that is coming upon a nation, a city, or a uh, world. And this is what you're looking at with wild animals that are inhabiting places that have been abandoned by man. Consider the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, verse 22, where the Bible says that hyenas will howl in their citadels and jackals in their pleasant places. Her time is near to come and her days will not be prolonged. This is the judgment that was coming upon Babylon as jackals were taking over uh, cities and towns. Look at Isaiah 34 and 13. Thorns will overrun her citadels, nettles and brambles, her strongholds. She will become, listen to this, a haunt uh, for jackals and a home for owls. This is just a couple of references to the fact that wild animals would take over cities in the last day. Jackals are seen as a judgment upon that nation or that grouping of people. Ladies and gentlemen, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. Now I want to shift just a little bit because of what God has been dealing with my heart from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 concerning these last days and the takeover of government and the entrance of the Antichrist. I dealt with that a little bit this past week on Prophecy Files. I encourage you to go back to that. But I want you to listen carefully to these articles that I want to share with you, and then this passage of Scripture that comes from 2 Thessalonians 2. This article reads that Mark Zuckerberg was interviewed by ABC's George Stephanopoulos, uh, and he was saying concerning this that some say, the article headline reads, stay-at-home protests organized on Facebook could qualify as harmful misinformation. Now follow this carefully. This particular interview uh, with George Stephanopoulos of ABC deals with the stay-at-home orders and those that are violating state social distancing rules, organizing themselves in protesting as harmful misinformation, according to uh, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook, and said that it would be taken down. Please notice the words taken down. The article reads, quote, how do you deal, and he's asking Mark Zuckerberg this question, how do you deal with the fact that Facebook is now being used to organize a lot of these protests to defy social distancing guidelines in states. George Stephanopoulos said, as he goes on, if somebody's trying to organize something like that, does that qualify as harmful misinformation? Quote, we do classify that as harmful misinformation and we take it down, Zuckerberg said. At the same time, it's important that people can debate policies so that there is a line on this you know, more than normal po political discourse. I think a lot of stuff that people are saying that is false around health emergencies like this can be classified as harmful misinformation. A spokesman for Facebook in this article told The Hill that the events would only be taken down if they violated state laws, meaning that many protests against social distancing guidelines could continue to be organized on the platform unless they break the guidelines themselves. The article continues to read, quote, unless government prohibits the event during this time, we allow it to be organized on Facebook. For the same reason, events that defy government guidance on social distancing aren't allowed on Facebook. Now listen carefully to that. They said that they would take it down if it defies the state law or the guidelines. Now, why is that important? Because last year, in April of 2019, the research and this article concludes, and it is a fact, that Facebook literally censored and took down a Christian conference in Australia as uh, part of the information that they were giving concerning this particular conference was not according to the standards of Facebook. Now, follow me. The article reads, research shows a staggering 11 Christians every hour are being slaughtered for their faith. This and other correlating issues will be addressed at this religious 
freedom at the crossroads, the rise of anti-Christian sentiment in the West. Now, this particular conference was taking place, and I'm summarizing this article, and Facebook found the material that was going to be released along with those who are leaders and authorities in this area as violating the community standards of Facebook. And so, as a result, they took down this conference, would not allow them to broadcast on social media. Now, why is that so important? That was happening last year, and now uh, Facebook owners and those that are watching over that are saying, we're going to take down things that may be misinformation. The question is, is what I'm saying to you as a Christian pastor and the information that I'm bringing to you going to go against the community standards and the misinformation that could be delivered through social media? Listen very carefully to me. We are now at a place because of this virus and the plague pandemic worldwide where congregations and churches are not allowed to gather inside of their sanctuary. So, because of the time that we're in right now uh, and the rise of the internet and the ability to broadcast social media around the world, we are now, as pastors and leaders and other business owners and so forth, are completely dependent upon the internet and the social media platforms to communicate the gospel or whatever it is that we want to broadcast. The question is, should the people who are in charge of content over social media and Facebook, should they deem what I'm saying to you now, preaching that there is one way to get to God, that Jesus Christ is that way, or that we want to gather together in the parking lots of our towns uh, at churches or whatever that it may be and gather together, is that going to be classified as misinformation? Because here we are, not allowed to gather inside of our homes by the laws, and we understand we're doing our best to follow these guidelines. But should the time come that we decide that it is our right and privilege to be able to gather together, are we going to be like the Virginia pastor that has just been arrested because he had six people more than what he should have inside of his congregation and while he had in the sanctuary, while he had plenty of room for them to gather? I submit to you that with one push of the button, that the silencing of the gospel or the taking out of the way could take place of every gospel preacher in one moment, if they deem necessary or decide to do so. Now, why is that important? It's important because there is a great restrainer that is happening in our world today. It is the power of the Holy Spirit through the church. And right now, that restraining force and power is holding back all evil and wickedness and the very Antichrist from appearing on the stage. Listen to the scripture from 2 Thessalonians 2. And now we know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Now follow this. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed. This is a direct reference to the Antichrist. So listen, if Satan has been waiting to introduce the Antichrist to the world, what is stopping him from being able to uh, introduce him, unveil him before the world? There is one restraining force, the power of the Holy Spirit, working through the church right now. I believe that to be the restraining power against all evil having its absolute way inside of our world right now. Now, what is to say that the church that has now been literally removed from our sanctuaries with one push of the button could be taken out of the way by social media and the voices of churches be silenced, taken out of the way, removed from the middle portion. This, my friend, is of great concern and is a Bible prophecy fact that as soon as the church, the restraining power of the Holy Spirit is moved from this earth, taken out of the way, the Antichrist will be revealed. Now, since Paul said, since you already know these things are happening, you can realize that the mystery of iniquity or the wickedness, lawlessness of the last days is already happening it will only be the removal of the restraining power of the Holy Spirit through the church 
once the rapture takes place, I believe, will reveal the man of sin, the Antichrist. This is important for you to understand. This term withholden here describes a restraining work of the Holy Spirit through the church, meaning this, something that is holding down, withholding, suppressing something from being totally unleashed, like a uh, dam that is holding back the restraint of the powerful water that is coming behind it as a force. Once that dam would break, there is nothing that restrains the powerful moving of that force from devastating everything in its path. That, ladies and gentlemen, describes exactly 2 Thessalonians 2, and I believe that we very well could be at this very moment. The only thing between us and the wickedness coming is the restraining power of the Holy Spirit through the church. If that is taken out of the way or the voice is silenced, what is to restrain then the absolute unleashing of evil and the Antichrist upon this world? I submit to you nothing. And the only thing that is holding it back is the grace and the mercy of God. Peter tells us in 2 Peter 3 and 9 that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So it is God ultimately that is holding back the day of evil through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the work of the church. And when that has been removed or taken out of the way, as the scripture says, then that wicked would be revealed. That wicked is a definite article title of the Antichrist unleashed upon this world. What would that be? It would be hell on earth like, like we have never seen. If you think this plague and this timing is something, my dear friends, the unleashing of the full authority of Satan's man, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, and lawlessness ravaging our world, my friends, it's nothing to be compared with what we're dealing with right now. And people are asking the question, how long is this going to be? Well, if you can't endure this, then you better be prepared to meet Jesus Christ when he comes because the seven years of tribulation, my friends, is nothing. When this right here, this plague, this virus has only been restraining us in our homes for a short period of time, this is nothing to be compared with what seven years of tribulation will be and the unleashing of absolute wickedness and evil. The Bible says that when that restraining force is taken out of the way, it's then that the Antichrist will have his full authority and measure upon this earth. There will be nothing standing between the Antichrist and this world. Unrestrained evil. At that moment, the powers of hell will be unleashed upon this earth and nothing will hold it back. I want to say to you, my friends, this is a critical hour that we're living in and this passage of scripture really leaped off of the page as I began to think about with one push of the button, the voices of pastors and the gospel preaching could be silenced just like that. And the restraining power of the church that holds back evil through the Holy Spirit would be moved out of the way and nothing left to hinder. That's why it's so important that we're ready to meet Jesus Christ at any moment. What would that Antichrist do? I can tell you he'll do the same thing that happened in Rome. Listen carefully. Instead of the Antichrist coming to uh, just do away with every religion, he'll just create a new one where there is loyalty to the state. And I am seeing this happening right now. The elevation of science, technology, the worship of these things, my friends, of government that is now holding people in its grasp. We're watching that kind of worship take place. Uh, we're not going to do anything until we get the data, and then we'll move. Science is what's going to dictate what our future is. Technology is going to dictate what our future is. Government is going to dictate what our future is. People are allowed in that atmosphere to continue to worship as long as they want to, whatever they want to, but you must make your loyalty, just like Rome did, to the state and to its guidelines and its laws. This is the Antichrist spirit that is rising in this last day. I can assure you that when the man of sin, the Antichrist, comes on the scene, he'll not be coming with a pitchfork and pointed ears. He will come speaking peaceably, the Bible says. He will come making peace. 
how the nations of the world and the people of the world would roll over for someone right now who would step on the scene and said, I have the virus vaccine. I have the answer to the problems of the world. There would be an instantaneous move towards that individual. That's exactly what's going to take place. And as soon as the restraining power of the Holy Spirit through the church is moved off the scene, out of the way, not, not done away with, but moved out of the way, that wicked one, the Antichrist, will appear. I believe we are right there. And I believe the only thing withholding it is the curtain veil between us and him stepping on the scene. That's exactly what is taking place in our time. I want to encourage you, my friends, to get you and your family gathered together, seeking the face of God and making sure your heart is right before God, and then moving out to help others to hear the gospel. Whenever you're watching this, one of the ways that you can help get the gospel out and this information that might be limited in its uh, ability to get out is for you to share it as many times as you possibly can. Help us to get the word out of Bible prophecy that is right in front of our eyes, revealed in the last days. And I can't stress it to you enough. You can find it on Facebook, on our app, or on paceassembly.org, YouTube as well. There are plenty of platforms for you to share this out. This is a limited time offer, I can assure you, because the day is swiftly coming when the restraining power of the church and the Holy Spirit working through it is moved off of the scene, taken out of the way, that all of hell will break loose on this earth. Are you ready? I believe beyond the shadow of any doubt, we are on the edge of the coming of the Lord. It's very interesting as we close today that the Bible tells us that right after a plague took place in the Bible, that God commanded a census to be taken. We're right now in the time of a census with this plague that's all around us. My question is how many signs, how many sounds, how many things that are coming right up out of the Word of God is it going to take before we absolutely dedicate our hearts and lives to the Lord beyond the shadow of any doubt and live by faith, not by fear. We have officials telling us and operating out of a fearful mindset, but the people of God are people of faith. I want to encourage you today to pray like you never have. Seek the Word of God and God's face every day of your life. And I encourage you to get you and your house and those that will listen to your voice into the ark of safety, into Jesus Christ. And I can assure you that Jesus will keep everything that we commit to Him against that day, against the coming of the Lord. I want to encourage you again to share this out to as many people as you can. You're helping preach the gospel around the globe when you share this out. Till the next time we get together around God's Word, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.